Hey everyone, welcome. Hope your day's off to a great start. Thank you for joining me today. Um, go ahead and kick things off. Why don't you paste in the chat? Let me know what you're interested in learning today. Uh, and then let me know where you're from as well, because it's always interesting to see where everybody comes from and, and how you heard of us. How's it going, Fred? Nice to see you. Hey, Jen. Good to see you again. Oregon. Wow. Welcome. That's the other side of the country for us. So while you guys are pasting that in there uh, in the chat box, I'm sure we're going to have a few people kind of trickle in here at the last minute, um, just par for the course. But I know everybody's time is valuable. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll get started. And then this is pretty much an open discussion. Um, you can let me know at any time in the chat. Hey, Jerry, let me know anytime in the chat. Uh, if you have any questions, you need me to elaborate or expand on any of the topics that I'll be covering. Welcome, Natasha. All right. And let me see here. I will make sure I get the right screen shared with you. All right. I believe you guys are able to see my screen. So with that, let's uh, let's go ahead and dig in. Um, today's agenda, I want to share with you guys, um, SEO is a big, big subject, right? There's on-site SEO, there's technical SEO, there's off-site SEO. Um, real quickly, what I'll do is I'll kind of define what each of those are so that you understand uh, what role they serve, you know, in your overall content marketing strategy funnel. Um, I go to see this link here so on-site seo generally has to do with like your meta titles and meta descriptions and that's just a fancy word for what shows up in google or bing when somebody's doing a search on the search engine right so it's the um, the link and the title and description so for example uh let's say i was looking for plumbers in wilmington mc so as I scroll to the organic listings, this would be considered the meta title, and this is considered the meta description. So you actually do have the ability to influence uh, what that is and what's displayed there. Additionally, uh, on-site SEO includes a lot of things revolving around your content. So the length of the content, the quality of the content, any kind of redirects you may have. So if you at one time you had a page on your site, but then you deleted or deactivated that page, you want to make sure you've got redirects going to the closest uh, similar page. And then includes things like your social media profiles. Um, there are specific markup you can include on your website that says, hey, this is our Facebook page, this is our Twitter page, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, TikTok, etc. Um, while off-site SEO has a lot more to do with promotion of your content, right? So this has to do with backlinks, which uh, means people that link back to your content. So for example, let's look at this search search term I just did in Google. I search for plumbers in Wilmington and see, and you'll see that Yelp is number one, Angie's List is number two, and then you've got Mint's Plumbing, which is the first actual organic listing of a business. But these two here, Yelp, and Angie's List, these are both directories. And so when you click on one of these, um, let's see, Yelp, I believe has this option. When I click on the Yelp one, and let's say I click on a specific company, we'll go with Riceville Beach Plumbing. We'll wait for my computer to catch up because what you don't see in the background uh, is that I have like a hundred different tabs open. So it's a little slow. So this link here is their website address, their website URL. This is technically linking back to their website. So this is considered a backlink. Um, so that would include things like guest posts on blogs, writing content for other people, submitting your content or your website to directories such as Yelp or Angie's List. Uh, even on your Facebook profile, your Google My Business page, if you have a link to your website there, that's considered a backlink. Uh, and then you've got the the blogging platforms like Quora and Medium. And then you've got technical SEO, and really that has a lot more to do with like your website speed, how mobile friendly is it, uh, the performance of your overall website has a lot more to do with the code. So for today's topic, we're pretty much just sticking with what is on-site SEO. 
and how do we go about like creating content um, for on-site SEO and content pillars. So it is now 11 of five. Let's go ahead and dig right in. And the first thing I want to share with you is how do you go about researching, um, you know, what to write for? Because to go back to my example where I did, let's see if I can back up here. I did plumbers in Wilmington and C, right? That's considered a search term. But if you were to conduct this same search, chances are you might not say the exact same things here, like Wilmington and C plumbers, right? Or plumbers near me, right? Those are all considered separate um, search terms, or in other words, separate keywords. Although those days are over, it's not really about keywords anymore. Um, Google, with its natural language processing, uh, has become smart enough to know that you and I are searching for the same thing, even if I'm searching for plumbers in Wilmington NC, and you're searching for Wilmington NC plumbing company. So Google and Bing, they're all smart enough now to know that we mean the same thing. Um, so when you're approaching this, don't approach it from that, that individual silo of like, I'm just trying to rank for plumbers in Wilmington and C, right? You want to incorporate, of course, this as a keyword in your content, but you also want to use any of the variations or the synonyms around that. So in my own example, let's say I was trying to rank for web design, Wilmington and C, right? I may use the term, you know, web design. I may use web developer, website designer, uh, web designer, uh, any any terms that are closely related, because again, Google and Bing, um, most of the search engines are smart enough to know that we mean the same thing. So with that said, uh, let's dig into doing some keyword research. So let's say I'll stick with this theme for now for plumbers in Wilmington and see. So as I start typing, there are a few ways you can do keyword research. Uh, some of them will give you better results, better information than others, but in its most simple form, you can just go to Google itself and start typing and see what comes up here in the predictive um, search results. So you'll see like plumbers, Wilmington NC comes up, plumbing, Wilmington NC. So I can start writing these down or keeping a list of these. These would be the synonyms or the keywords that are closely related to my search. So when I get to the point of writing content, I can start incorporating some of these suggested search terms into my content if I'm interested in ranking for both plumbers Wilmington NC and plumbing Wilmington NC. I hope that makes sense and you can see what I mean. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is let me move this screen over that way I can keep an eye on the chat if you guys have any questions around that. So that's one of the ways um, that you can do the keyword research. Let me shrink one of these screens and I'm going to share a tool with you right now. Uh, how many, tell me what browser you guys use in the chat, if you don't mind. You know, is it Safari? Is it internet? I don't think it's Internet Explorer. Chrome, Firefox. Okay, a lot of Chrome users. That's really good because the tool that I'm going to share with you, one of two of them, um, is a Chrome extension and it's a free extension. And it's called Keywords Everywhere. And you'll see, you can see that from my search results here. And like when I started typing Wilmington and C, you'll see that I've got some things on my search results. For example, this whole right column here, you probably don't see on yours, right? But then I can see this box below, like people also search for, I can see some of the ranking information. Uh, I can see the website and domain authority, how many backlinks. So Let's see, I just shared a link to you guys to the Keywords Everywhere Chrome extension. So this will essentially do the same thing that we were just doing with the predictive search. As I started typing in Plumbers, Wilmington, NC, let's just assume that I finished that search um, and Plumbers and Wilmington, NC was my search term. Keywords Everywhere. It said my streaming got disconnected. Hopefully everybody's still with me. Just in case, let me go ahead and reshare my screen because I don't want to skip a beat here. All right. Perfect. So this keywords everywhere will show me some of those synonyms or some of those related keywords uh, based on my search term. All right, Jerry, I hope, uh, I hope you can see my screen. I think I've reshared it. Thank you for letting me know. And as I start moving down, you'll see the, 
you know, so this is the related keywords. And then it shows me what people also search for. And then down below, it'll show me the long tail keywords. So that in itself is a lot of really helpful information uh, that's available to you for free through that extension that I shared. It's called Keywords Everywhere. Now, they do have a paid option. You can click on, you can load metrics and see like how many searches this gets. But we've got other tools for that that you can still accomplish for free. So um, not to take anything away from Keywords Everywhere. If you prefer, go ahead and upgrade. Definitely a lot of helpful information. The second tool that I'm seeing here, um, which shows me like the domain authority, how many links link back to it, et cetera, is called SEO Quake. And so I'm going to share that with you as well. And I just shared that hopefully through, uh, through your chat, you'll see SEO Quake will give you some of this SEO research. So if I look at, let's look at Mint's Plumbing because they're, they're the first organic local uh, ranking one. This again will show me how much search volume it gets, like estimated monthly traffic, how many keywords is, is being used on that specific page, and then again with the domain authority and how many links. So let me pause right there. When I say domain authority, do you guys know what that is? Okay, so domain authority, this is, this is one of the things I think that, um, you know, made Google as successful as it was. It takes into account like several ranking factors, right? But one of those being the domain authority. So essentially, domain authority has to do with like how credible your, your domain is. So for me, I've had my website since 2011. Google will see that I've had my website since 2011 and the older you know, that website is and the longer I, I have that domain, the more that will help my domain authority. Also, what influences domain authority are like how many um, website visitors you get, how long they stay on the site, and then how many people link back to your website, right? Your primary objective out of everything you take away from here today, your primary objective is to provide value to your website visitors. If you do that, you will be rewarded. So all this other stuff is just layers onto a cake and when you approach it like that you have no problem getting a lot of the ranking and some of the benefits that come with seo um, so again as it relates to domain authority the higher the number the more credibility and authority it has in the eyes of search engines um, hopefully that was a good explanation of it and then we've already talked about backlinks and what that is now, again, using uh, Mint's Plumbing, just because they're my guinea pig and they're here on the first, I can see their domain authority is 15 out of 100. I can see they have 38 domains that link back to their website with a total of 78 links. So some of these domains link to them more than once. Now you can click using this extension that I shared with you, you can click on show backlinks and you can see where exactly they get backlinks from. So show backlinks for the entire domain or show backlinks per subdomain. So those two tools are really helpful because, um, again, they're free Chrome extensions and you don't really have to leave Google when you're doing this kind of research and finding out like, what are you gonna write about and what are your competitors writing about and how are they you know, achieving the ranking that they're achieving? So with that, Backlinks should be available, Uma, under, um, it says ref referral domains and then referral links. So this is how many domains link back to them and then how many links they have, right? So sometimes you'll, or most often, you'll have more uh, referral links than you will domains, right? So think about it in, in my eyes. Here's a little trick of the trade. We build a website for a client we're probably going to put a credit in the footer, right? Website was built by Design Loud. So that footer is available on every one of your pages. You, your website may generate, you know, 10, 20, 30 different backlinks to our domain, right? So it would count as one referral domain, but 30 backlinks, even though they're coming from that same domain. So I just, I just exposed all the web developers and the agencies out there and why we do that, that link in the footer, amongst other reasons. That's not the only purpose of it. Um, but I hope that that helps clear it up for you. 
All right, so I've shown you a little bit on how to find like related keywords and what people search for, long tail keywords. But another tool that I like to use um, is called Answer the Public. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but let me drop a link to that in the chat. Answer the Public is a really cool tool because it'll let you know like what kinds of questions people are asking. So let's go to answerthepublic.com. You'll see I'm there now. And keep in mind, when I'm doing all this research, when I'm finding these related keywords that Keywords Everywhere gives and these backlinks and, and whatever answer the public is going to give, I'm just, I'm pretty much throwing them as a brain dump into a document, right? Just so that I can, when I get to the point of writing my content, I have a plethora of information that I can pull from as needed. All right, so when you go to answer the public, the first thing you want to do before digging into any of the search terms is change the default country. It's probably going to default to the UK. So you want to make sure we're set to the US unless you're somewhere else or your business is international. Now I'll stick with that plumbing theme. Let's just type in plumbing okay, as my keyword and I hit search. So what's cool about answering the public is it's going to give me all the questions, all the um, prepositions, comparisons, everything that I need to know around this specific search term, this keyword. Okay, and I'll go ahead and X out of there. Now, what's cool about it too is you can you can separate that by the questions like who's asking what, why, will, which, when, can, where, who, how, and are. But one thing you'll notice here are the different shades of green. So the darker the color, the more search volume it gets, right? So I may look at this and what plumbing can a handyman do? That might be a really good example of um, either a specific topic I can address in a blog post or I can make a whole blog post around that, right? And when I create that blog post, I'm going to do a few things in there and I'll dig into this more in a moment to break it down. But I'm going to include like some internal links, external links, and again, provide value to the reader so that if they're coming to me with a question like this, what plumbing can a handyman do? I hopefully answer that and I give them the value that they're looking at. Another one is like why plumbing pipes make noises. That would be really good because if, if I was a plumber and my target customer was a homeowner, they're probably going to go to Google and type in why, why are my plumbing pipes making noises, right? And if I can do my job on creating content, answering their question and providing value to them, uh, I'm, I'm hopefully able to convert them into a customer a lot faster. Or at the very least, they've landed on my website and they have the, now they're in my targeting pixels like Facebook pixel, Google pixel, so I can show them ads because we've already delivered value to them. Hopefully they know, like, and trust us at this point. It'll be easier to close them as a potential customer. So uh, I won't dig in much more to answer the public, but again, you can kind of go through these and see the, the will, the which, when, and then as you scroll down, you'll see some variations of that. Again, keeping in mind the color of the green. Now you don't always have to go for the darkest shade um, because chances are other people are, are going for those. So there's a lot of low hanging fruit when it comes to these lighter colors and creating content. Judy, uh, I don't know what it looks like for you guys. I share them. Uh, I share them and I don't know if it shows all at one time or if they disappear after I share one or the other. Um, that's a good question. So <laughs> SEO Quake was one of the Chrome extensions I mentioned. Uh, I can try to throw that back up real quick. And then the other Chrome extension, uh, which also has a Firefox version, is Keywords Everywhere. So let me, I'll type those into the chat and you can go ahead and search for them. And Keywords Everywhere Chrome. Perfect. That way you can just go ahead and search and find that. And then we're on answerthepublic.com right now. All right, so I've got around about a general idea of like what keywords or search terms people are using, what questions people are asking. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, writing my article. So 
what website platforms do you guys use? You know, what's your website built on? If you'll paste that for me in the chat, it might help me instruct us. WordPress is a good choice. I'm liking it. Ooh, Laravel. Are you a developer, Uma? WordPress and Divi. Okay, Laravel is a really good PHP framework. I've got some familiar. Uh, perfect. So it seems like a majority of people are on WordPress, which makes my job even easier here today um, because I know a lot about WordPress. GoDaddy, build your own. It's all right. Got to crawl before you can walk. And GoDaddy's website builder has come a long way over the years, so it's uh, comparable. Julie, Shopify. So there'll be some similarities, Julie. Uh, if I dig into the back end of WordPress on things that you can do on Shopify, I think on Shopify um, – You'll have to get certain apps, whereas in WordPress it's called plugins. But all right, so let's uh, let's go about writing content for SEO. So I'll go back to my Google search results, and let's say I'm interested in writing. I'm interested in in ranking plumbers in Wilmington NC, right? And so we take what we've learned from keywords everywhere or through uh, answer the public or some of these other ones and i'm going to grab some of these questions and start throwing them into a document so the why plumbing pipes make noises i probably should have clicked on that because now it's going to open in the new tab so i'll start organizing my document my Google Doc. And again, you can do this directly on WordPress. I just chose to do it on Google Doc. So why does my plumbing pipes make noises? Do my, sorry, plumbing pipes make noises. All right, that was one question. Now, let me turn these little notifications off as well. Now I'll go back to answer the public. I'll grab a few more questions that are related to this. Um, so will plumbing solder work on steel? Might be another one. Come back over to Google Doc. Will plumbing solder work on steel? And I'm going to pretend I spelled that correctly in that sense as two E's and then let's grab one more so I can go through this really quickly um, what plumbing is used and no that might not be applicable because we're really trying to target why the plumbing pipes make noises why is plumbing so expensive and why plumbing is the best trade why plumbing is a good career why plumbing vents are important so I might add why plumbing vents are important and then why plumbing is so expensive. So wait for my computer to catch up here. Hopefully everybody's still with me. I've got this circle ring of death. All right, let me pause here while I restart Chrome because I think my Chrome is choking a bit. Do you guys have? All right. I restarted. Hopefully we have better experience now. I did not realize when I restarted that um, it would restart the chat. All right. Perfect. Anybody have any questions so far on Answer the Public?
All right, I'm going to assume that's a no. So we're going to go through, let's get some of these search terms we have. Why plumbing pipes make noises? Why plumbing is so expensive? And I'll do one more. Uh, why plumbing vents are important. I'm not a plumber, but I assume that's related. Vents are important. All right, so everybody's still with me, I hope. Now that I've got those topics, I'm going to go ahead and format them. Now, when you're formatting your content, especially when it comes to blog posts, I want you to remember something. You generally have a heading one tag. There's usually only one heading one tag. And you have, you know, anywhere between like two to four heading two tags. Two, I'll say two to four. And then under each heading two tag, you may have several heading three through six. Uh, and that can range from one to, we'll just say six, right? Spam score lets you know uh, how much, I guess it's the, the overall score of the domain or the website as it relates to being seen as a spammy website, right? So if your website was ever hacked or anything and it starts automatically showing Viagra ads or something, that could be an example of like driving up your spam score. All right, so when it comes to writing your content, keep this in mind. There's one heading, one tag. There's two to four heading, two tags. And then there's about three to six heading, uh, heading three through six tags, okay? So I've got these here. I'm going to make these my heading two tags, okay? Because I'm going to answer these questions. So again, I'm in Google Docs, but you can do this directly in WordPress. All right, and then drop this down. Just remember, this is kind of my uh, my layout. Now, at the very top here, I'm going to give the title of it. Um, let's say, plumbing questions a homeowner should know, and I'll say four important. So four four important plumbing questions the homeowner should know. Okay, that's my heading one. That's my title. Now, first thing, and it's just like you did when you wrote a paper in school. Do you remember you have a title, you have an introductory paragraph, then you'd have a heading and supporting paragraph, uh, supporting that heading or that text, right? And then you just kind of follow that. It's the very same approach with this. You know, so when I'm doing this, I'm going to do an introductory paragraph. For now, I'm just going to grab some lorem ipsum text and pretend that I wrote all this content out. Okay, let me format that a little bit better. I'm going to, there we go. All right, so why do, why do my plumbing pipes make noises? And on here, I'm going to do an answer. So it could be, you know, I do it because of this and this or this. And then down below, I'm going to do the same thing. Will plumbing solder work on steel? And then maybe I'll go ahead and answer that question. I want you to notice, though, that I'm kind of mixing up, like, if this is a question, I'm mixing up some bullet points here, right? Or some letter points. Let's go, let's change these to bullets. And then here, I'm just answering with a paragraph. So I'm going to show you in just a moment what this is for and why that's important. Why is plumbing so expensive? We'll do a numbered list here. We'll say skilled trade, then we'll drop down and support that. I'm going to give this. Let me do a quick, uh, quick test. Who remembers which heading this was? Let me see who's paying attention. Heading one through six, which one did I use here for this one? Heading two, good job, Judy. All right, so that would mean that this one should be a heading three because this is related to this, this top heading, right? So I'm making this one a heading three. 
I'm going to say something else. Um, skilled trade, labor costs, and then I'll do parts and materials. I'm really just making this up. I have no idea what it – actually, I do know what it takes to be a plumber, and I do not want to do it. Uh, I tried to unsuccessfully repair something in my house one time. I had to call a plumber. All right, so now we've got that text. I'm going to change this out a little bit. I'm going to make these heading threes and just give it a little bit of formatting. All right, heading three, heading three. Now, if I was in WordPress, I would actually be able to not apply that heading three to the whole text here. But for this example, I'll just continue on. And then why plumbing vents are important. So here I will just paste a couple paragraphs. And then I've pretty much got my, you know, my content piece, right? Maybe this is a blog post. Now, why I emphasize the bullet points and the numbered list down below is because Google has something um, Google has something called the zero uh, position search results. So if I take this, let's just take one of my questions. Why do plumbers? So the really cool thing about this is that you've got this people also ask section. And generally, it'll pull from a snippet that you have, you know, from that unordered list. Or as you'll see there, you know, three causes being noise and pipe work. Is it normal to hear? So sometimes it shows like this and the people also ask. Sometimes it'll be like a direct answer to a question like, uh, I think I've done a similar search, how to build a website for free. So here's another example of the zero position. Do you see now this was the heading two and then they had a numbered list, right? And so if you go and you click on this and inspect that a little bit more to kind of figure out like how they did that, you'll get in, you'll probably see somewhere on this page that list here. See, does that look familiar? So they essentially just did the same thing that we did here. Um, Judy, to create the content, I'm honestly, I'm just pasting lorem ipsum text, uh, but considering a majority of you are from WordPress, I can share. Let me go to the back end of our website because we also run in WordPress. So there's a really good WordPress SEO tool. Um, Yoast is really good. And then all in one SEO pack. Those guys are local in North Carolina, right out of Raleigh, really cool guys. I like to use Rank Math, which is the SEO plugin for WordPress that we use. And you can see here, like it does really well. Uh, on average, we're getting close to 100 you know, hits on our website a day um, and all of them being our target market. But if I go, let's go in here to create a post, I'll show you some of the benefits to Rank Math. And then I'll show you um, some of the tricks to writing and creating that content using some, some tools that may help you in, in the process. All right, so Rank Math, <clears throat> once you get it installed, you'll have this option over here. So let's assume I'm doing web design as my primary keyword. Rank Math will automatically suggest some search terms for me. So maybe I'm doing like web designers near me but then they, they give you a checklist of things that you can do. And as you start adding them to the content, it'll start checking it off for you, right? So additional title readability, content readability, and then you can click on their content AI and hit research. And it will give you some other topic suggestions and keywords that you can use in your content. So you'll see in just a moment, Finishing its final touches. All right, so it shows me here. Here are some variations of the keywords that I could use, right? And then it'll also show me related keywords. 
it'll show me common questions and then links. So when I say links, and this kind of ties into the next part of the presentation of content pillars, every piece of content you have, service pages or blog posts, you should really have at least one internal link and external link. Uh, Judy, to answer your question, if you're doing this, uh, I believe you said, I believe you said you were on WordPress. So if you're doing this, you'll just add a piece of content in. Uh, let's see if I still have. So you highlight the content and you click this paragraph tag and you'll be able to change it to a heading. And then from here, you can change it. Heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, right? Um, so as I was mentioning, the internal external links, look at when you do a search right now, this is kind of the, the goal, the end goal for you. We know our target audience is interested in advertising on connected television, right? OTT, CTV. So they're probably researching right now, how do you advertise on Hulu? When you do that search and you get past the paid search terms and then the branded you know, Hulu domain itself, one of the first few sites you'll see is ours and it's seven tips for advertising on Hulu and other streaming services. When you click on that, you'll see a lot of the same format. So this was my heading one, you know, we did an introductory paragraph and then we did our heading twos and supporting text. But as I kind of reverse engineer this blog post, if I hover my mouse over here, this is a link and I click on that link. This is technically an external link. Okay. And it just, it links to hulu.com, but it links to another website. You want to do the same thing. So, you know, maybe linking to a um, educational resource or a piece or a similar blog post, uh, anything that kind of adds value, improves your point, right? But then down below, you see this link and this links to our digital marketing page. So if I click on that, it's going to open in a new tab, our digital marketing page. And this is a service page. So in other words, the advertising on Hulu was a blog post. This one is a service page, so it's a static page. This static page is considered a content pillar, right? All the blog posts we're creating are probably linking to, you know, some of our service pages or some of our pillar content. Maybe they're linking to other blog posts, but at the end, and as rank math will suggest, while you're going through the exercise of creating a new blog post, you want to have at least one internal link and one external link. Um, rank math, the content AI can give you suggestions on what that external link could be. Another good resource for finding out and defining content pillars, uh, SimRush, which is a really popular SEO plugin. I just pasted a link there in the chat for you. Uh, SimRush will walk you through what pillar content is and how to create pillar content on your own. Now, <clears throat> everything I've shown you so far has been primarily around utilizing different tools, but there's a really good website called Small SEO Tools. And this website, um, go ahead if you have it now, if you're interested in clicking on the SimRush link, Make sure you click that link because I'm about to replace it with this website, which is full of a bunch of free SEO tools. And this website will have keyword research uh, tools. It will have article rewriters, information. So this free small SEO tools, when you open that link, <clears throat> it will look something very similar to this. So you've got a ton of, and all of these are free. Uh, as you can tell, they pay for the site with ads. So you'll see a lot of ads, but if you don't mind that, all of these tools here are available to you, right? So you've got article rewriter, plagiarism checker, paraphrasing tool. As you scroll down more and more, you've got more options. Um, you know, reverse image search, compressing images. Then you've got keyword tools. So keyword density, keyword position, keyword research, comp competition. Oof suggestion tool and backlinking tool, right? So again, everything I've shown you was kind of utilizing these different tools to get all this information. I've used this website. Uh, I used it a lot more several years ago when I was starting things, but this is a really good website for pretty much everything I've shown you thus far, plus more.
Um, so this will help as far as like when I write my content, you can put it in here and you can have the keyword density tool tell you how many times a keyword comes up, you know, in your article. And you can also use this to search for positions, right? So if I did the keyword position tool and I get past the paid ad, there we go. You put in here um, keywords, let's say what the URL is. Let's go. I'm trying to think of who I can pick on. We were doing mints, plumbing. Plumbing, Wilmington, and C. Let me just get that website back up. And come on, come on. All right, here we go. So let's grab, hopefully nobody here is working with Mints or affiliated with them, but we're kind of tearing down their SEO strategy right now. Hopefully they won't mind. All right, so I'm going to put their website URL in, and I'm going to do plumbing near me, plumbing, Wilmington, NC. Uh, and I can keep going with different variations. Let's just do those keywords right now. <clears throat> Scroll down a little bit more, prove that I'm a human, not a robot, and I will check keyword position. So this will tell you where you're ranking, because a lot of times people will say, oh, I'm ranking on the first page already, or, oh, I'm not, I'm not ranking at all. And you have to consider, like, when you're in Google, um, as I was here, let me back up. This is going to be tailored around what I'm searching for, right? Because I'm logged into Google. If I back up one step. <clears throat> one of these websites is really dragging my computer down. All right, so when I'm in Google, you'll see up in the upper right-hand corner that I'm signed into my Google account, right? So doing any search on here, plumbing in Wilmington NC, if I scroll to the very bottom, it'll say this is based on my, my data and my information and from my location, right? So if you did the same search, you'll probably get somewhat different results than what I get, okay? <clears throat> so you have to bear that in mind. And that small SEO tool, this rank tool, will give you a pretty good idea on where you rank. Like we did plumbing, Wilmington, and C. Mints as number two. This is conducting the search as if the user is not signed in or they're not somebody, right? So it's not really skewed towards your search habits or your search behavior, okay? So some tools that we've used in the past to help with um, uh, ranking and measuring SEO, there's some I've already shared small SEO tools with you. There's a paid tool, which in my, in my opinion is well worth the money. That's called Ahrefs. And Ahrefs or Ahrefs, however you want to pronounce it, I'll paste the link in the chat for anybody who's interested, does a really good job of keyword research and content audits. So when I log in here, let's say I'm a plumber and Mint Plumbing is one of my competitors. Um, I'm going to grab their website. I'll go ba back to Ahrefs. <clears throat> and you can see Content Explorer. I can track ranking, Site Audit, Keyword Explorer, Site Explorer, etc. I'm actually going to do Site Explorer. Let's say I want to reverse engineer one of my competitors' SEO strategies right? I'll paste that in and I'll hit the search button. Now this pretty much again kind of shows me everything that keywords everywhere and SEO Quake all show me. So you do have this information available to you for free. But what this will also allow me to see is like who's linking to the website and then I can see what keywords they rank for in the eyes of Google. I can see what pages are ranking and where they rank. So you'll see they're number four here for Plumbers Wilmington NC, gets about 800 monthly searches. Plumbing Wilmington NC, they're number four. 
Uh, it's about 500. Again, I can see the pages and whether they're improving or decreasing their rank. I can see the top pages that they have on their website, so I can get an idea on the content strategy that they're utilizing. And then I can also look into like any paid keywords that they're paying for, um, any ads they're running. I can do a content gap analysis too. So if I wanted to compare their website with mine, let's just, I know this is gonna be way off because I'm comparing a web design agency to a plumbing company. But just to show you what I'm talking about, let's go to show keywords. <clears throat> and so it's telling me here that uh, these are some of the keywords that we rank for and where we rank. And then it shows me some of the ones that Mints ranks, ranks for as well. So you'll see that I just put one competitor in, but if I had continued to add like at least two more competitors, um, you know, it would have shown me that, that cross bench analysis as well. So Ahrefs is a really good one. And then another tool that I want to share with you, and then I'm going to open it up for any questions or explanation is SimRush. SimRush is a really good tool as well. And I think they have a very generous free tier uh, where you don't even need to sign up. But if I plug that same URL into SimRush, uh, let's get back to Mint Plumbing. Google's going to think I need plumbing and I'm going to start seeing plumbing ads everywhere now. All right, let's plug that same one into SimRush. <clears throat> SimRush, I'll paste that URL, I'll do a search. And it's pretty much, it's not that you need both of these tools. Uh, it's kind of like a one or the other. Um, both of them will pretty much tell you the same thing. But this will tell me about how much uh, monthly search traffic they get, you know, just from an organic search their domain authority score, their backlinks. I can scroll down a little bit more. I can see what keywords they're ranking for. And then something I've not yet touched on is when you're writing content, it's important to understand like what the keyword intent is behind it. So there's, there's four kind of keyword intents. One is informational. People are just researching, um, you know, answers to a question like, why did my plumbing pipes make noises, right? Then there's navigational. So they're just kind of browsing different brands, different products. There's commercial, they're investigating certain companies, brands, services, and then there's transactional, which means that they are ready to make a decision. They're, they're looking for a conversion. Um, so when you're creating your content, make sure you're creating it in that sense of using that seven tips for advertising on Hulu would be more of an informational keyword intent. Additionally, what SimRush will tell you is where some of the competitors are in their ranking and how many keywords they have ranking on Google compared to, you know, mints. So mints in this graph would be the purple. But this this one here, Parlier Plumbing actually has a lot more keywords and traffic and opportunities than mints. Um, so you can kind of see what those keywords are and how they overlap. And one thing I really like about SimRush is the keyword gap as well and the backlink gap. So if I use, let's do Parlier Plumbing, I think with the website. I have to search for it because I don't know if I, uh, the name of the company. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, using, I think I pronounced her name correctly, Parlier Plumbing, let's compare. This will tell me what keywords they both share and then what, where they rank and what they lack. So you can see here, Mints is the blue. They have 100 keywords. Parlier has 107, and they have about 30 that overlap, 30 keywords that they're both using and trying to rank for. So here it shows Plum, Plumber, Wilmington, and C. It's a commercial type keyword intent, right? So people searching for that search term are investigating brands and services. You'll see that Mint's Plumbing ranks number three, while Parlor ranks number nine. Gets an average of a thousand monthly searches. It's somewhat difficult to rank for. And if I were to run ads for this on Google using Google Ads, it's on average $11 each time somebody clicks on that ad. Okay. 
this one here, Parlor Your Plumbing, of course, we call that a branded keyword. So they're ranking number one while Mint's is ranking number 75. But then as you scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, Emergency Plumber, Wilmington NC. They're both competing for that one. Mint's is currently number seven, Parlor is number 10. So again, as far as like your keyword strategy and research, this will go a long way in helping you identify like what keywords you are targeting, what keywords your competitors are targeting, and incorporating that into your content strategy. Lastly, with the same example on SimRush, I can look at a backlink gap. So I can see everybody that links to mintsplumbing.com and then everybody that links to Parlier, and I can see if there's any opportunity to get uh, backlinks from some of those competitors. And so hotwater.com, yellow book, which is, I believe, the yellow pages, local database, world orgs, these all seem like directories, probably free to list your website and get those backlinks in. Okay. So again, I would be researching my competitor. I find out where they're getting their backlinks. I reach out to those same directories and I create a backlink for myself. All right, with that, let me stop. We've got about 10 minutes left to go over any questions you might have. I'm going to drop some things in the chat here for you. Um, first and foremost, if you found any of this helpful, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've been trying to be very active on pacing uh, or posting copies of our webinars there. So you can see some of our past webinars and any future webinars we tend to um, publish. And that link's about to disappear. So if you're interested in that, uh, Judy, I'll be happy to answer that for you. Give me just a moment. <clears throat> I'm curious to know, um, what are your biggest frustrations regarding SEO? I'm gonna post a poll in the chat there while I answer Judy's question. If you could take just a moment to answer that for me, I'd like to understand a bit more on where you're you're finding it to be the most frustrating. So Judy, to answer your question on social media and its effects on SEO, um, you know, on a scale one to 10, I would say social media as it relates to SEO is probably like a number three on priority, maybe five. Now <clears throat> you can utilize social media to help with SEO, but there are a couple things to consider here. One is you wanna make sure your Facebook business page is is public, right? So it's able to be indexed by search engines. Um, and then when you're posting on social media, for example, let me go to designlaw.com. I'll pull up one of our social media pages. Let's go to Facebook. When you're posting on like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, you'll want to make sure, you know, you're doing 80% value-based, 20% selling but you also wanna make sure you're including links to your website because those would be considered backlinks if uh, you are linking back to your website, right? And that was one of the goals. Now, additionally, there's something, if I technically inspect element, this is kind of getting into the weeds on more of the technical side a little bit, but the good news is you guys are in WordPress. So plugins take care of 99% of the hard work for you. Uh, except for actually creating the content. Uh, if I inspect this element, I'm going to find my Facebook tag. These are called my uh, OG tags right here, Twitter. So this shows like this is our Twitter URL and Twitter information if anybody were to share. You know, same thing happens with like Facebook and Instagram. So there's ways to tile that. But again, in WordPress, you're going to be doing that uh, through your SEO settings. So Jen, yeah, SEO, it can be overwhelming. It's, it's really not rocket science. At the end of the day, out of everything I've shared with you, quality content, if you create quality content that your readers enjoy, find valuable and share, like you'll be rewarded. Um, these things are just kind of additional, you know, layers to the onion. They, they help you, but they're not significant. And actually, nobody's asked this yet, but, uh, but Google's about to push its biggest update since 2011. That's really about to shake things up. So for people that have been writing content specifically for the goal of getting it to rank high, in other words, trying to cheat the system, they're going to be penalized now. And 
the people that are writing and creating content that provide value to their readers, that's valuable, you know, contains facts, it's fact checked, um, certain, you know, certain elements are going to be rewarded. So again, it's more and more important to put the reader, uh, the focus on the reader and providing value to them. And anything and everything you take away today, that's your primary goal. Uh, let's see, Tim, I'm comfortable with technical side, but now I'm working on content keywords, playing with snippets and schema next. Yeah, so Tim, you, I think, said we're on WordPress. Yeah, so uh, again, for my WordPress users and even my Shopify user, um, plugins will take care of that. Like Rank Math, you know, uh, and Yoast has the same one, all-in-one SEO pack, but if I go in my Rank Math settings here, <clears throat> and I go into, I believe it's in the general settings. Nope, I just passed it. Schema templates. Rank Math and some of these other plugins will add that schema code for you. So like the frequently asked questions or the videos or the uh, the images, et cetera. Um, and it's not that expensive. I mean, I think the free Rank Math, I've used it for years. Only recently did I upgrade to the paid version of Rank Math because it includes that content AI piece where it'll it'll help you with like what headings, what topics you need to use, and what links you can use. Um, the content creation part. Okay, so <clears throat> Judy, WP Elementor, or Divi, I think they both serve the same purpose. I think they both use a lot of resources. My personal favorite page builder is Beaver Builder, because if you ever go to deactivate Divi, you're going to be stuck with a huge mess to clean up, because um, Divi relies a lot on short codes. Um, <clears throat> the other ones seem just fine, though. Elementor, and the session will be recorded. We'll be posting it to YouTube. I just shared a copy of the ebook. Uh, it kind of goes through what I've touched on, hopefully in, in easier to understand terms. There's some videos and some text in there as well. Uh, but it's a free ebook. It walks you through creating the content, how to structure the content, how to promote the content. One thing I want to share with you guys, I was kind of hesitant to do it at first, but this whole Google update is, is mainly targeted to people who use and rely on something like uh, these uh, machine learning article creations. This here is called Jasper, jasper.ai. And so Google is trying to get in front of people who like use this and don't change any of the content. Yeah, Jasper is really, really good. But the thing to take away from this is making sure that you proofread the content and all that. So if I go Let's let's go back to my article I was creating here while we've got a few more minutes. And I start creating this article in here. Let me get rid of that warm Ipsum text that I created. And I'll show you the power behind Jasper, formerly known as Jarvis, formerly known as conversion.ai. Um, <clears throat> oops. But this tool will help you with creating content and like I said, then your job becomes um, proofreading it and making sure that it adds value. So I give Jasper a command. Yeah, Tim, Tim pointed it out. Like you're relying on uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So it's not going to be 100% spot, spot on, but write an intro paragraph. So I just give it a command and I hit enter. And Jasper is going to start writing the content for me. Now, again, I want to go through and like double check this. All right, so let's say I'm going to stick with that part. Now I'm going to use my paragraph tool. Let's go to the power mode. So as they say in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. All right, plumbing. Voice. So I'm going to have Jasper create paragraphs for me. And we'll see down below. Give it just a minute. There we go. So let's assume I took the time to kind of read through these and I really liked this one. Okay. So I'll start pasting this in. Do the same thing here. 
a paragraph, paragraph about two and five. We just copy this command because I'm going to end up using it to finish this out. Now, again, the point of this is not to take this and, and post it directly, right? The point is this helps give you a little bit of creative juice so you can hopefully go back in and edit the content and do all that. But this is pulling from all the information that's available on the internet and it's trying to do its best to create like 100% unique content. Um, so I'm just pretending that I'm reading through all these and that it is accurate. It makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> All right, now uh, let's take that. Let me go back to my blog post I was creating. Let's see here. Let's change this up. My heading. Now you see how my SEO score over here is changing, but still it's, it is relying on this being my focus keyword, which is not anymore. So let's change this to plumbing. Currently my score is 16 out of 100. If I change this to plumbing, my score just jumped up to 64 out of 100, okay? Now again, don't take that exactly and just post it because that's what this next Google update is gonna do. You can use this and reword it or just make sure you're fact checking or anything, but again, it's it's not to like do your job for you, it's just to make it a lot easier. There's no penalty supposedly that's gonna happen for using tools like OpenAI and Jasper and all that. Google just wants to make sure you're not just copying and pasting from one to the other. Um, but those little changes in itself brought my score up to 64 out of 100. Now, if I added a couple of images, you know, some more words, maybe I'd have Jasper create some more content. Yeah, I need like 50 more words and I'd be good. So you start to see how all that comes together. Jerry, for those of us that use WYSIWYG builders, would you recommend we work in the website and WordPress? How much control do I have to influence SEO rankings if I stick with the website for Dummies Builder? I think the GoDaddy builder is, is good for starting out. Um, I know Google has come out and said, or people that work for Google have come out and said that they prefer WordPress just because of how it's developed and the hierarchy with like taxonomies and categories and blog posts and post types and everything. Um, WordPress itself is free. Like all you're paying for is the hosting, which you probably already pay for through something like a GoDaddy. So you can install WordPress for free and then download a free theme and go to town um, and have that same kind of control. But then you have a little more control over like installing, you know, we've got a newsletter plugin on our site so we can send out newsletters to all of our subscribers. We've got SEO plugins that'll help us with ranking. Um, there's also some other plugins that we have for various things, you know, like posting the Google My Business page and whatnot. Um, if it's within your means, I'd say go with WordPress. I'll, I will always advocate for WordPress. If not, um, don't sweat it. I think uh, Google will or GoDaddy is just enough. All right, the last couple things I wanted to share with you here, if you found this information helpful, uh, aside from my technical difficulties, I ask that you please leave your feedback. It helps us out, it helps our rankings, of course. Um, and it just helps us understand like what value, if any, that we're delivering to everybody. So I've pasted that link in the chat there. And I believe I have shared everything I have with you guys. So if you're interested in any SEO work, I'll paste that link here. Uh, we do have it as a service. You can see our pricing and our packaging. But outside of that, if you're doing this yourself, because like I said, it's not rocket science, reach out. If you've got questions, we'd be more than happy to help walk you through it. Um, we do website design and build. Yeah, that's actually how I started uh, 11 years ago, was building websites and graphic design. And then uh, over the years, we pivoted a little bit more towards digital marketing. So we do social media marketing, advertising, uh, search engine optimization, but we still do a lot of websites and WordPress support. 
All right, guys, that is all for me. Any other questions I can help you with? You're very welcome, Judy. All right. I kept you five minutes longer than I was supposed to. I wish you all a great rest of your day and weekend. Um, good luck, and let me know if we can be of any help. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.